can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell why don't you take it Love is all around These. Grant, you don't usually drink before the show. This is Irish coffee. Oh, come on. There's no coffee in there. There's no whipped cream. It's not Irish whiskey. It's scotch. Well, that's the last time I'll ever get a recipe from that bartender. <laughs> Why are you drinking? This is medicinal. I think my glands are swollen. Feel them. Hmm? Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> It's probably nothing. I was with my grandson the other day, and he has the mumps, and I never had them. And you know what could happen when a grown man gets the mumps? I mean, it can oh, affect yes, I his ability. I, I mean, he can become... Yeah, right, right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he can still... Yeah, I know, I know. How do you know? Uh, Reader's Digest. <laughs> you know, you really ought to see a doctor. Yeah, well, I made an appointment, but now I'm not sure I really want to go. They got this new guy filling in for my regular doctor. So what's the difference? Well, my old doctor knows me. It took me 20 years to break him in. <laughs> he doesn't tell me to lose weight. He doesn't tell me to exercise. He doesn't tell me to cut down on my drinking. He's a good doctor. <laughs> Mr. Grant, come on, none of that matters. You really have to go to a doctor. Because if a man gets the mumps, you know, he can become... I know. Very much. I know. I'm telling you, she was holding him like this. Ted, please. It's been a lovely evening. Don't spoil it. Mr. Grant, don't you worry about the show. I'll handle everything. You just get to the doctor. Doctor? Oh, well, Mr. Grant thinks he might have the mumps. Oh, that's why you're feeling up Lou's throat. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow, I hope. What's Lou so worried about? It'll be fine. And even if he does have the mumps, so what? Who cares if you're out of gas and you never take the car out of the garage anyway? Uh, excuse me. I'd like to talk to whoever's in charge of the news. Oh, he just left. But I'm his associate producer. Can I help you? Uh, I think so. It is rather important. I wonder, uh, could we discuss it in private? Uh... Well, sure. Yes, we can go right in here. Well, I guess I better go down to the studio. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. I've been doing the news for eight years now, and I still feel as nervous and as petrified as I was opening night. Of course, I'm perfect once I'm on. <laughs> right before I feel a little sick to my stomach. That's funny. I don't feel that way till after you're on the air. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I don't know how to thank you, except to say that I've already said that. Well, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. And thank you. I haven't heard that many thank yous since my honeymoon. <laughs> and they were all mine. Huh? How much time do we have left on the air? Uh, 12 minutes. Okay, read this. I just typed it up. This could be the biggest exclusive WJM ever had. Hey, this is dynamite. Uh -huh. And a half million dollars in grab? Yes, and we've got the documents right here to prove it. That man is a bookkeeper for one of the companies involved. Well, look, the grand jury's on this case. Why doesn't he go see them? Because he's afraid of losing his job. Oh. Murray, do you think we should put it on the air tonight? You bet. It's terrific. Okay, yeah. I mean, it came from a really good source. I'm going to get it to Ted right now. Yeah. From the horse's mouth to the horse's... Murray! <laughs> And this note for Pretty Twin Cities Collins. 
The Chamber of Commerce announces they are beginning to take applications for the Queen of the Winter Carnival. So all you pink-nosed little snow bunnies. <clears throat> Mary, can't you see I'm doing the news? <laughs> Read it. WJM has learned exclusively that at least one half million dollars in graft was paid out in connection with the U.S. 721 Highway Project. Furthermore, WJM has in its possession documented proof of these charges, which will be handed over to the federal grand jury investigating this matter. <laughs> now back to the real news. <laughs> I will say... Tell us how you first came into possession of these rather startling documents. Oh, yes, it's my job. I'm a newsman. And I sniff around and I smell a story and I scratch and I dig till I find a bone of truth. <laughs> Next week we're going to teach them to roll over and play dead. <laughs> Mary, could you tell me where the latest... Oh, goes? say, Lou, come on over here. <laughs> Guys, I want you to meet the producer of the 6 o'clock news, Lou Grant. Now, wait a second. You guys have the mumps when you were kids. Ted, I don't have the mumps. It's just a stupid little sore throat. <laughs> well, it's just too bad. Uh, you couldn't be here last night when you had that stupid little sore throat while we were busy scooping the free world. <laughs> couldn't have done it without you, Lou. <laughs> Even though we did do it without you. All right, that's all. <laughs> Listen, while we're passing out the kudos, I want to introduce you to Mary Richards and Murray Slaughter. That's them over there. That's Mary and that's Murray. <laughs> well, Ted, I think we have everything. Well, it's always nice to talk to fellow newsmen. <laughs> Thanks for the interview, Baxter. And the uh, fellow news chicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I handled that rather well, don't you? Excuse me, Mr. Baxter. Oh, <clears throat> well. It all started in a small 5,000-watt radio station in Fresno, California. Well, I'm not a reporter, Mr. Baxter. I'm Special Agent Harrison with the Department of Justice. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you came here to pick up those documents I uncovered? Mary, this gentleman is here to pick up those documents. Yeah, I'll have them right here. Here you are. Here you are. <laughs> First, I'd like to ask a few questions. Shoot. Sure. Tell me who uh, gave you these documents. Well, sure, those documents. Hold it. Ted, you don't have to answer that question. You're a newsman. All right. I'm a newsman. I don't have to answer that question. Okay, you don't have to tell me, but then you're going to have to tell the grand jury. Here's a subpoena ordering you to appear tomorrow. Oh. Ted, <laughs> the First Amendment guarantees the freedom of the press. You don't ever have to reveal your source, even to a grand jury. Right. I don't have to ever reveal my source, even to a grand jury. True, but you can go to jail if you don't. <laughs> Ted. Shut up, Lou. <laughs> Give me a break, copper. <laughs> I don't know who the source is. I only work here. I mean, I stand in front of the camera and I read whatever they put in front of me. Half the time, I don't even know what it means. <laughs> and who was it here that did receive the documents? She did. <laughs> Mayor? Yeah, sure. Mary, remember, you're a newsman. You don't have to reveal your source. <laughs> well, Harrison, we're going to need another subpoena for a Miss, uh, uh... Look, here's the thing. <laughs> you see, the person who gave me the document asked me to keep it a secret. You know, so giving me a subpoena isn't going to do any good because you can't tell a secret, right? I mean, a secret's a secret. <laughs> It's Richards, Mary Richards. Hi, guys. Where's Mary? Hey, you didn't leave her, did you? No, oh, she's coming in her own car. What happened when she testified? Oh, I don't know. We testified separately. Well, I got to tell you guys, it's a great experience appearing before a federal grand jury. First, they take you to this waiting room where they bring you coffee if you want it. What about Mary? Oh, she didn't want any. <laughs> the man says we hadn't testified till lunch while they took us across the street to this restaurant. Where I had the best prime ribs of my life, Lou. That lawyer the station was going to send, did he get there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, was he any help? He's the one who told me to have the prime ribs. 
then I went back and testified. They asked me what my name was and what I did. And what'd you tell them? I told them I was the best darn newsman in all of America. You didn't. I had to. I was under oath. <laughs> and then they just asked me where I got the documents. I said, Mary gave them to me, and they thanked me. And the top it, Lou, they give you $20 and 10 cents a mile transportation. I socked them for 800 miles. <laughs> they didn't even bat an eye. <laughs> sort of gives a guy faith in the whole system of American justice. <laughs> Oh, Mary, hey, what happened? Tell us. Well, it's, it's hard to know where to start. From the beginning. Start from the beginning. Well, uh, I got there, and they asked me who gave me the documents, and I, I told them I, I couldn't tell them that. And then they took me to this judge's office, and he asked me why I wouldn't tell, and I said that as a newsman, I just felt I couldn't reveal a source. Uh, well, what did the judge say? Well, he was a very nice man. He said he respected my opinion, and, and that if he had a daughter, He'd like her to be just like me. Oh. <laughs> Did he say anything else? Yeah. He said that if I didn't change my mind by Monday, he's sending me to jail. <laughs> oh, Mary, honey. Can I ask you a question? <gasps> Did anybody say anything about my mileage? No, she's still sticking to it, Sue Ann. They had another hearing, and if she doesn't tell them by tonight, they're going to come and arrest her. Poor dear Mary. But I understand. I know what it's like to take a stand for a principal. I remember when a sponsor came to me demanding that I incorporate their product in my Thanksgiving special. They cajoled me. They intimidated me. They threatened me. But I took a firm stand on the principle of artistic integrity and told them to take their frozen giblets and ran them right up their nose. <laughs> Hi. Mary, dear. Dear, I want you to know, when you get out, if you get out, <laughs> I will be right here to help you find your way back into decent society. Thanks, Sue Ann. That makes me feel a lot better. Whom are you spending your last evening of freedom with? Uh, no one. Well, I won't allow it. Uh, no, Sue Ann. Plenty of time for solitary when they throw you in the hole. <laughs> now, would you like me to come over there alone, or would you like more of your friends? Friends, more. More friends. <laughs> Many. Wonderful idea, Mary. We'll make it a party. Now, you leave everything to me. We'll have a prison motif. We'll serve our drinks in little tin cups, and everyone can bang them on the table. Oh, this is going to be such a party. Come in. Could I see you for a minute? Mm. Mr. Grant, if I don't change my mind and tell them what they want to know, I'm going to jail tonight. And I just wish I could be sure I'm doing the right thing. Mary, I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I think. I think it's a reporter's job to inform the people. But if a reporter can be forced to reveal his confidential sources of information, he can't do that job. Because his sources will dry up. And pretty soon there won't be any information worth printing. The whole concept of freedom of the press will be destroyed. And with it, democracy. As you and I know it and cherish it. But don't let that influence you. <laughs> well, I'll just... I'll just have to go to jail, that's all. It's the right thing, it's the honorable thing. It's the only thing. There's just one problem. I don't want to go to jail! <laughs> Thanks, Sue Ann. Mary. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, yeah. Gee, Sue Ann, it sure was a good idea having this party to cheer Mary up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better pack my things. Mary, do you need any help? 
Oh, no, thanks, Georgette. I'm just going to take a toothbrush. I understand they supply the rest. <laughs> Mary, dear, I don't like to criticize you at a time like this, but everyone is taking their cue from you. Now, if you don't have a good time, no one else will. <laughs> so, hold your head up, put a smile on your face, and don't be such a drag. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Mary, how long are they going to keep Mary in jail? Well, until she tells them what they want to know. And when is she going to tell them what they want to know? She's never going to tell them. Oh, maybe she should take another toothbrush. <laughs> well, I'm all ready to go. Mary! All ready to go! <laughs> That's the spirit. Now, come on, people. We came here to cheer Mary up. <laughs> to have some fun. What do we do? <clears throat> Oh, I know Ted could do his impression. <laughs> no, I don't want to do my impression. Come on, Ted. Well, all right, if everybody insists. <laughs> <coughs> you got to guess who this is. All right, you, you dirty rats. <laughs> <laughs> there's more, there's more. I'm not going to eat this slop. Mm-hmm. I'm busting out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who is that? Sue Ann's first husband. <laughs> ah, bald people are always so jolly. <laughs> Richards. Mr. Harrison. This is Mrs. Langdon. <clears throat> Hello. Well, I'm, I'm all ready. It's all right. Take your time. What prison will you be taking her to? Well, for tonight, she'll be kept at the county jail downtown. Well, shall we go? Sorry, but we're going to have to put these on. Handcuffs? Sorry, but it's procedure. Yeah, that's a good idea. She might decide to overpower you. <laughs> these cigarettes. Take them. Well, Ted, I don't smoke. I know, but you got to have them to bribe the screws. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> we're going to get you out. We know. We're going to fight this thing and we're going to win it. Look out for yourself. I will. I couldn't have my overnight bag. Sorry. It's just that you know, had my toothbrush and toothpaste in it. <laughs> I just hate to wake up in the morning without brushing my teeth. <laughs> you know that taste in your mouth when you first wake up? <laughs> I know it's funny, but ever since I was a little girl, I mean, I just couldn't do anything until I brushed my teeth. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess we're going to be roomies. <laughs> my name's Mary Richards. Hi, I'm Sandra D, and this is Annette Funicello. <laughs> She's Sherry, I'm Kim. Oh. So, <clears throat> what are you in here for? Oh, I fell in love with a cop. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, what'd they get you for? Impersonating a Barbie doll. <laughs> No, well, okay. I think I'm going to sleep. Which uh, bunk do you want? 
Oh, I don't care where I sleep. I know. That's why you're here. <laughs> well, listen, I'll, I'll take the top bunk. I don't mind. Really, I don't. I don't mind. <laughs> my first time in prison. Oh, yeah? You could have fooled us. <laughs> but, well, what I mean is you'll have to excuse me for talking so much. It's, it's just that when I get nervous, I, I you know, tend to babble on. So, you know, I'm sorry if I'm bothering you. <laughs> if you want me to stop, just, you know, let me know. Because otherwise, I'll just, you know, keep right on talking. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a silly thing, but, you know, it's just this way I have of unwinding. So, you know, if you... <laughs> Don't you like your breakfast? <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's not that. It's just, you know, until I brush my teeth in the morning, I don't feel like doing anything. I know it sounds silly. What did you I'm... say your name was? Oh, Mary. Mary, I know you're probably not a bad kid, and this must be a very trying experience for you. But if you mention your toothbrush one more time, I'm going to spit up. <laughs> right in here? I've seen some tough-looking chicks in here, but this one takes the cake. Mr. Prince! Hey, Mary. They told me I couldn't have visitors. Hey, Mary, I haven't been a newsman for 30 years. I've known how to pull a few strings. Oh, this is uh, Kim and uh, it's, Sherry. It's okay, it's okay. Um, would you ladies excuse us for a second? Oh, certainly. Come on, let's go over to your place. <laughs> Uh, so, what you been doing? Oh, nothing much. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, Mary. I've been thinking it over. And you've got to tell them what they want to know. What? Yeah, listen, there are a lot of people out there, a lot of people who believe that a reporter has no more right than anybody else to withhold evidence. Is that what you believe? Yes. Now I do. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Mary, I want you to reveal your source. Okay, you look me in the eye and say that. Mary, I want you to reveal your source. You're looking me in the nose. <laughs> look, it's not what I believe in anymore that's important. It's you. You're in jail. You're in jail. <laughs> I just can't take it. I can't handle it anymore. Oh, Mr. Grant, everything's going to be all right. Sure, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> but my lawyer's already working on the appeal. I'll be out on bail in a few days. I mean, they can't keep me in here forever. What, a day, a couple, maybe a week? That's all. I just wish I hadn't talked you into this. Oh, but you didn't. Hmm? Mr. Grant, I didn't come to see you to find out what you had to say. I already knew what you had to say, and I needed to hear it. You want to look me in the nose and say that? <laughs> really? I, I feel just like I feel when one of my daughters makes me proud. I could... What? Nothing. No, come on, you were going to say something. What? Hug you. <laughs> I'm not a hugger. and you wouldn't say who gave you a story and that's why you're here? Yes. In other words, they put you in jail just for doing your job? Yep, that's right. Same as us. <laughs> well, goodbye. Yeah, kid, it was nice meeting you. Thank you. Yeah. Take care of yourself. I will, you too. <laughs> and, and don't worry, we'll bake your cake.
cake and we'll put a toothbrush in it. <laughs> Don't worry about her. She'll be all right. I just heard her lawyer's posted bail. She'll probably be out of here in three or four hours. Three or four hours? Oh, we'll probably be back by then. <laughs>